Oh, Lois, I'm so glad you were able to make it to dinner tonight. Oh, me too, Mom. We haven't seen you in ages. Oh, there you are. Did you find the new bathroom okay? Uh-huh. I'm so sorry about your father keeping us. He's probably down at the dock tinkering with that darn yacht of his. Oh, that's okay, Mom. We'll just have to entertain ourselves for... Hey, Bab, settle something for us. I wanted to bring, um, an owl on this trip, but Lois wouldn't let me. Could you have accommodated an owl? Well, I suppose there's some room in the owlery, but I can't be certain. I'll take that as a yes. You owe Doctor Who an apology. Hey, can we change the channel? I'm tired of watching old ships. Peter, that's not a TV. It's a painting. Actually, Lois, it is a TV. It's the PBS show Old Ships. God, I hate PBS. This PBS program is brought to you by generous grants from the Arthur Vining Davis Foundations and the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation in association with the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, with additional funding by Archer Midland Whiteman Colgate Palmolive Exxon Mobil and a 20 I found in a blazer I wore to a wedding last year. Tonight on Ken Burns' nine-part series on street signs, part four, Yield. Before they had the sign, people just run into each other. I don't know, maybe maybe you had to see the first three to get this, but I, I am completely lost. Lois, you said there would be other men my own age here, but there aren't, and I'm bored. Look, Peter, why don't you just grab a book off the shelf and be quiet? No! Books are jerks! Stop acting like a brat! Yeah, what about a picture book? Only if it has a mirror at the end of it, and it says, how about you? Oh, wow, look at these old photos of you and Dad. This must be around the time you guys were first dating, huh? Oh, dear, yes. Oh, your father was so handsome back then. I remember the day we met. It was one of those lovely warm summer days by the shore. Perfect giant beach ball weather. Would you like another John Barrymore and soda? Ah, yes, thank you, Clarence. How are things in terrible hood? Terrible, sir. Good, good. Uh. Ah, you dumb bitch! My friend and I held our breath, wondering which one of us he was talking to. <laughs> but the lucky one was me, and from there, our romance blossomed. Boy, you can take a punch, but at the same time, you cowered a little bit. Now that's a woman. <laughs> I love you, pussycup. I love you, too. Now, let's kiss while the camera pans over to the drapes. Good stuff happening over here. All implied. It was the happiest time of our lives. Unfortunately, that was the year the Great War with Alaska broke out, and even Carter's lofty connections couldn't save him from the draft. In one of the bloodiest battles of the war, Carter nearly lost his life in the battle with the infamous walrus-backed Nanukwafa. But through all of it, Carter never forgot to write to me daily to send his love along with a mixtape. Babs, you want to spend a mind-blowing afternoon? Get stoned and listen to this song. Jeepers, creepers, where'd you get those keepers? But after some months, the letters stopped coming, and I was certain he had perished. So I took up with a young dandy named Reginald. He would bring me small chocolates and sit in my front parlor and pitch woo at me, taking my hand gently and singing from bended knee the popular songs of his youth. Marry me and I will buy you chewing gum. With no other suitors to speak of, I agreed that I would marry him forthwith, even though my heart still belonged to Carter. 